Hello, welcome to this quick learning video. Today I will discuss how to select MOSFETs for permanent magnet synchronous machines and BLDC drive applications. I'm Nandor Bodo, application engineer here at Nexperia. The current and voltage rating of the device is important and can be deducted from calculating the maximal phase current and the battery voltage. A margin is added to these values to obtain MOSFETs ID and VDS ratings. The reverse recovery causes losses in the neighboring MOSFET and the current spike. Therefore, it is important to pick a device that has soft reverse recovery, i.e. it has a long reverse recovery time. Short circuit robustness is important for instances where a short circuit appears in the motor phase or due to failure of the MOSFET of the other MOSFET in the inverter leg. In these cases, a large current can rush through the FET for a short period of time until the short circuit protection reacts. Avalanche rating can also be important at fault conditions when large inductive currents are disconnected by the MOSFET or some voltage surge is caused by ESD or other circumstances. These need to be limited to the device ratings. To start looking for a device, the device losses need to be balanced out with its cooling arrangement. The RDS on is the key parameter for the device conduction losses and QGS for the switching losses. The cooling performance is related to the device RTH and ZTH curve. However, the cooling is mostly dependent on external cooling arrangements. Switching losses are small in motor control applications because of low switching frequency. And as they are hard to calculate accurately, we'll treat them in this video as a percentage of the conduction losses. If we look at a drive structure of a permanent magnet synchronous machine, each MOSFET has a current waveform that's shown here. They are complementary in the first and second half cycles. This means that by adding them together, we get half of the sinusoidal waveform in the period of a complete sinusoidal waveform. If we integrate that to get the square of the RMS value, we end up with this term, which is the maximal uh, value of the current squared divided by four multiplied by the RDS on gives us the conduction losses and if we account to the switching losses as 50% of the conduction losses we get the total losses. These total losses are usually determined by the cooling arrangement of the MOSFETs and we can work ourselves back towards the RDS on from there. We can then select the MOSFET and use the model to accurately simulate the switching losses. For Bosch's DCs, the approach is similar, but the equations are a bit different. The current is constant rather than sinusoidal, and it's conducted by two phases at all time. If the MOSFET switching is shared equally, each MOSFET uses this amount of conduction loss, shown on the left. Once again, the switching losses are est estimated as percentages in order to select the MOSFET candidates. And later simulations can be used to adjust these assumptions. However, if the most common application, the losses are shared unequally, as shown in the equations on the right. The bottom MOSFETs conduct during both control half cycles, while the top switches only at the positive half cycle. Thanks for watching. For more information, check out our interactive application notes on nextperia.com.